Hello chemists and welcome to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode, we're going to look at the trends across period three. This includes atomic radius, ionization energy, and their melting points. This is AQA specification 2.1 periodicity and is covered on paper one of your final exams. If you've not already subscribed, please consider doing so for more chemistry content each week. Period three elements are found on the third row of the periodic table and they run all the way from sodium on the left to argon on the right. When it comes to atomic radius, it's all to do with the number of protons. And as we go across the period, we add a proton for each element. So we can see how the atomic radius changes as we go across the group. And we can say that the trend for the atomic radius is that it decreases as we go from sodium through to argon. Ionization energy is a bit more complicated. I've already had an in-depth look at ionization energy and you can find the link to that in the video at the top of the screen or in the description below. Now there are four things that affect ionization energy. These are nuclear charge, atomic radius, electron repulsion, and electron shielding. And we can see from the trends that the ionization energies across period three are plotted here. Now, the general trend from sodium through to argon shows an increase in ionization energy. And this is because the atomic radius decreases and the nuclear charge increases. But there are two anomalies from this trend. The first one between magnesium and aluminium, the ionization energy decreases because the shielding increases as you move from the S orbital through to the P orbital. Now the next anomaly is between phosphorus and sulfur. The ionization energy here decreases because the electron repulsion increases. This is because we are now pairing electrons in p orbitals. Looking at the melting points then, we'll start by plotting the data of the period three elements. And then we're gonna split it into three types of structure. The first structure containing sodium, magnesium, aluminium, they're all metallically bonded. Now the strength of a metallic bond depends on the charge of the ion and the size of the ion. In the second group containing just silicon, which has a giant molecular structure made up of strong covalent bonds, and this gives it a really high melting point. And finally, we have phosphorus, sulfur, chlorine, and argon, and these are simple molecular structures. And it's the strength of the van der Waals forces that influence the melting point. Remember, the bigger the molecule, the stronger the forces. And here we have phosphorus, which is P4, sulfur, which is S8, chlorine, which is Cl2, and argon, which sits just on its own. So we can see that sulfur has the highest melting point of these simple molecular structures. In summary, then, the period three elements run from sodium on the left through to argon on the right. Atomic radius decreases as we go across the period. Ionization energy increases as we go across the period, apart from those two exceptions which we've talked about. Melting point depends on whether the element forms metallic, giant molecular, or simple molecular structures. Thanks, chemists, for watching this episode of Bale's Chemistry. If it's been useful, give us the thumbs up. And for more content, make sure you subscribe to the channel.